Hello and welcome YouTube, how are you guys doing? Today I wanna show you my latest build, this is the Cold Grenades Saboteur. It's been quite a while since I did a build highlight video, um, yeah, today's gonna be another one. Um, so yeah, let's bring up the buff here and I'm gonna show you the build shortly in action so that you can like see how the build plays, or, like just to like show you the playstyle and then I'm gonna talk about skill allocation, devotions, items, as always. And then after that, I'm gonna show you like um, some other like highlights, like combat highlights as well. So yeah, we are using cold grenades in this case, and we have some items like converting physical pierce and fire damage to cold. And because of that, I have like grenades as my main ability, flashbang for like uh, day reduction, etc. And then like shadow strike to engage. Blackwater Cockhead for like flat RR as well as OA reduction and Ravager's that Red Gaze ability here, uh, Pneumatic Burst here, and the Mines here, and also for like defensive purposes, also the Blade Barrier here that you can also use, um, which I don't really like on a dual wield attacker that much, but on a build like this where you're kind of a caster, it's pretty nice. And also Blade Burst as your filler in between, also to like proc Lethal Assault to like give us more cold damage and offensive ability. So, how does this work? Um, you have like an enemy over there, right? You use like Shadow Strike on him, like this to engage, and then after that, you put down all your resistance reduction stuff like Thermite Mines, right? Um, Black Water Cocktail, you throw like a flashbang in his face as well, and then you spam grenades, right? That's how it works. And since you're gonna use melee, um, you should also like hold down the left mouse button doing all this so that after your Shadow Strike and before your grenades, at some point in between, you're gonna use. Blade Burst as well, to like increase your offensive ability and your cold damage. Which is also um, important in this case because Grenados do have weapon damage in this case. We have like 50 25% here, 25% here, so we have like 50% weapon damage on grenades. So we do make use of the flat cold damage from Lethal Assault as well. So yeah, if you spam like all the buttons, it kind of looks like this. And uh... The build is a melee character, compared to other Bombermans it is more melee oriented, as you can tell. Um, but you can always like, whenever you're like a little bit low on life or like you feel like you need to like dodge an ability, you can always like use this ability, right? the Rift Tear, or like Displacement actually in this case, to like quickly disengage from battle. Or if you like time it right as well, um, you can also use the blade barrier to like dodge an attack, right? When you're like getting smacked by something that you don't want to be smacked, press blade barrier like the second before it actually hits you, and then you're gonna be safe. So yeah, that's gonna be it for the quick presentation here, and I'm gonna start talking about skill allocation points. So first of all, let's check out the skill allocation. We are a demo and a night blade, which makes a saboteur, and our main ability is the Granado ability, right? Um, so we have Granado max out to 26 here, High Impact max out to 22 here, and Shattering Blast max out to 22 here as well. So this is like as high as we can push this by any means possible, right? Um, other than that, we also have the Flashbang, really good for any Demolitionist, especially when you're like in need for like flat DA reduction on top. So yeah, like 12 out of 12 flat DA reduction here on the Flashbang gives us 250. Uh, yeah, flat air reduction. And uh, one pointer in Searing Light actually puts us to 7 out of 10, um, which is already above the sweet spot of 6 out of 10. So, yeah, you don't need to like put more than one point here in this case. Um, this will give us 30% fumble and impaired aim, which is uh, pretty nice. I mean, it's kind of a like RNG like defense, but it's still pretty good. Also, we have a one pointer into Vindictive Flame and a one pointer into Ulzin's Wrath. Um, note that usually the um, sweet spot for Vindictive Flame would be at 11 out of 16 or like 14 out of 16. But since we don't really need the total speed that badly, like I mean sure, some casting speed is fine for Granado, but we're not like super dependent on it. Like we're not an attack speed based character, we're not a casting speed based character. This is basically a, um, yeah, like cooldown reduction based character. So yeah, one pointer is fine here, one pointer is fine here as well. Um, Flame touched. This is like a pretty nice toggleable aura as well, as you can see down here. And this gives you like flat fire damage, which will be added towards weapon damage and then converted towards cold damage on Granado, as I will show you later. Through like the weapons that add weapon damage to Granado. 
And also, this has like a bunch of offensive ability. I mean, unfortunately, this doesn't give you cold percent damage. That would be actually awesome. And uh, yeah, if like Flame Touched had just like elemental damage instead of lightning and fire only, that would certainly boost uh, like cold diminutionist additionally. Because right now it's a little bit underwhelming in my opinion. Also, temper as a one pointer here to like get physical pierce and tonal trauma and the A. I mean, we don't really care about any of this except for the flat physical, which also gets added again towards Grado and then converted to cold. Mm. And like the DA is always nice, right? They could also like put percent cold on temper, I guess, instead of on flame touched. But yeah. Maybe next year, right? <laughs> um, Blast Shield 14 out of 12. Uh, really nice. The best defensive skill in Demo, like the only defensive skill actually, uh, apart from like Searing Light. That's really awesome. Uh, like 14 out of 12 is like another sweet spot here. You have the sweet spots at 5, 10, and 14 out of 12. And now I believe like some at 17 or 18. Because like those points will give you like plus 1 max auras. So like 10 gives you plus 5, um, 5 gives you plus 4, right? 14 gives you plus 6. Max auras whenever that's procs, in addition to like ever increasing damage absorption that you get. So yeah, it's just really great. And as a demo you also always have to use blast shield. Then we're using Blackwater Cocktail. Soft cap here for the reduced OA, like flat OA reduction. Um, one pointer here to like, I mean, make this like uh, non spammable and you only have to like cast it once, then it'll be like cover an area, right? And you're only using this mostly for like debuffs anyway, so it's. This is like a must have here actually. Also, it does reduce physical damage of your enemies by 18%, which is not too bad either. And then Agonizing Flames is our flat resistance reduction. Um, skill here, which means we don't need flat RR from devotion points, right? And in this case we get 31 flat resistance reduction here from 18 out of 12, which is pretty decent overall actually, it's pretty good. And Ozone's Chosen gives us, um, obviously that's like a must-have once you have like one of these three grenade type of abilities as your main ability. Ozone's Chosen will just like modify <clears throat> the damage by 21%. This is multiplicative, so whatever damage you have, it will take all of that damage and like basically give you a 21% damage boost. So this is a total 21% damage boost. Also, it gives you the chance to um, like reset these, like 36% chance of 100% skill, re skill re cooldown reduction is um, very important as well and like a big part of this damage of Granado as well. And skill energy cost makes like spamming this um, a little bit more feasible, which is great as well. So yeah, put Ozean's Chosen as high as you can if you're using either Granado, Canister Bomb or Stunjax as your main ability. Last but not least, we have Thermite Mine, which um, has a sweet spot at 10 out of 16, like up to 10 out of 16 you will get like um, a bonus of 2% resistance reduction and after that only like 1%. So yeah, two, 10 out of 16 gives us like 34% elemental resistance reduction here. And uh, yeah, like ever since the Thermite Bind buff, these are actually pretty great. They are instant now, they don't have to like be deployed first. So yeah, really great ability now. Um, Nightblade. A one pointer into dual blades, mostly because of the physical resistance. And also actually the pierce damage will be added to Granado via weapon damage again and then as well converted to cold. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. Also, this has cold percent, so... Um, yeah, it's not, not bad at all. Uh, a one-pointer execution, I mean... The build is not gonna default attack much, right? Like, very rarely will it ever actually default attack. But execution is, like, such a good weapon pool skill, and, like, just putting one point here to, like, have 20% chance to use this is pretty decent, in my opinion. So, like, I think it's fine to, like, put one point here, um, just in case that you actually use default attacks between blade bursts and grenades and shadow strike and canister bomb and I mean um, blackwater cocktail right, um, so that you can actually have like a proc to use execution as well, a chance to use execution as well. Um, but I mean, feel also free to not use this. Like it's not mandatory, but I think it's like fine for like a one pointer investment. Also, blade burst one pointer here right. We just use this for the lethal assault buff, which gives us. Huge flat cold, huge flat acid, which we unfortunately don't really convert to cold, but it's fine still. Like it's also really good, like just for the cold and offensive ability, right? And um, yeah, 
So, um, I must have in this case because this is, compared to other Gonado bows, it's very melee oriented actually, so it's fine to use this, we can reliably proc this, and yeah, it's gonna help us out with offensive ability and damage. Shadow Strike and a one pointer into Nightfall. I mean, this is mostly just for like engagement, right? Like for mobility. Uh, Nightfall, I'm using this just because I have like plus six to this ability for some reason. So this is like pretty decent frostburn damage as well, which is gonna tick like when while I'm like casting the other stuff, right? Um, but I'm not using the Dallas here because like I don't really need lower cooldown on it. I'm not gonna spam this anyway. Like I have other things that I have to spam anyway in between, so yeah. I think it's fine like this. Pneumatic Burst, this is actually just a 1 pointer, which puts me up to 8 out of 12. Um, on a build like this, I don't really need to put more than 6 out of 12, right? I mean, I'm not complaining if I get more than that with just 1 pointer, but it's fine like that. Um, Breath of Bergothian, which does reduce the cooldown of this like by 5 seconds if you're dual wielding. And that's pretty nice to like have a heal up more often, so we are using that as well. Also a one pointer in the elemental awakening for like flat frostburn, elemental damage, elemental resistance. Um, this is not really a heavy damage over time build, otherwise I would max this out for the flat frostburn damage, right? Um but yeah, like a one pointer is really good here. Um next up we have Shadow Stance. Um this is actually at 13 out of 12 because I mean you definitely want to put it to soft cap, right? And then if you're like in need of more DA, you wanna like put more than the soft cap. And uh, I was kind of in need of more DA, but also I was kind of point starved. So I only could like put like my spare points that I have on top of whatever I needed for other skills in here. So I ended up just putting like one po additional point here. So that's why this is at 13 or 12. And I mean, if you have like, I don't know, better pierce resistance for example, uh, you can like feel free to like cut some points here, put them here instead, or if you have like more DA, you can also put this down to like 12 and like put the points over a nice chill, for example, instead to like have more resistance reduction. Um, so yeah, those like the overcap points here are definitely flexible. Next up, we have Weight of Shadow. You definitely soft cap this on any uh, not bad. It's just like really good. And uh, nice chill. I mean. You at least soft cap this on a cold pierce or acid build, right? For the resistance reduction. And if you have like spare points or like you want to play this a little bit more glass cannon y, you can put more points here and like pull them from, for example, Shadow Dance or like Phantasm Armor, right? Um, but in my case, I went with like just a soft cap because I felt like I needed the points over here instead. Like, these were more important for me. And next up we have Phantasma Armor, we are using this as a, as a soft cap to like have 30% pierce resistance, 30% freeze resistance, and 36% petrify resistance, as well as 124 flat armor. And since we are kind of a melee guy, armor is not bad at all. And also this helps us with like energy regen, with energy absorbed from enemy spells as well. And yeah, I mean there's not really any reason to overcap this. On this build at least, I don't need the pierce resistance that badly, but it is nice to have, and uh, yeah, that's why I like softcap. Uh, one pointer into anatomy of murder. Um, the damage that we're dealing, which is cold damage, is not scaling of cunning, so we don't really need to like cunning dump. But it's still nice to have some like 12% cunning for free for like just one point, right? Like 8% damage to humans is always pretty good as well. Um, we're not scaling vitality or bleed, so yeah, it's like not too important, but still helpful. One pointer, fine. Uh, one pointer into merciless repertoire, basically just to like get 46% cold and frostburn damage for like one point. That's not too bad, but it's really not amazing for this build. And last but not least, blade barrier. Um, I really dislike this on say traditional dual wield attacker uh, night blades, right? But on like a castery night blade, which is, I mean, this one is kind of a caster. So, um, I like it on these, because like whenever you have your skills on cooldown and you have like no means of healing yourself, um, it might actually be worth it to use Blade Barrier, right? Also, I forgot to mention Blade Spirit, just a one-pointer here, to like spawn the two Blade Spirits, and they help you out with like proccing stuff for your devotions. Really great for that. And they do some 
well, some tiny amount of cool damage as well. Alright, so next up we are gonna check out the devotions. Um, first of all, I have the Rumor Devotion. The Rumor Devotion is like a tier 2 devotion that is mandatory for every cold and acid build because of the cold resistance reduction in this case. And yeah, it's really great. And also, I'm using Ultos for the f like percent elemental resistance reduction and also for the cold nodes here. Right? I unfortunately don't really have any lightning to cold resistance, or, uh, like, I mean, conversion, so it's not really that um, effective, but it's still okay. Um, but you could like switch this out for say Viper for example and then use something else instead I guess. Um, but it's kinda nice to have like Ultos, Leviathan and Amatok all in the same build. Also the next up tier 3 devotion would be Leviathan, right? So we have some like cold damage here, physique, HP, energy, DA, physical resistance as well as pierce resistance. Flat cold, cold percent, frostburn, frostburn percent, and an active that's not too bad actually for like castery night blades in my opinion. And well, you need like 13 purple and 13 green for those, right? So you need to heavily invest into like purple devotions, and there aren't too many good ones, but like Thorn is pretty decent, Wolverine is pretty decent. I'm not using Wolverine though because otherwise this wouldn't quite work. So I'm using Owl here instead. Which is not too bad either, like you get 50% frost burn damage here, um, reflect damage reduction, it's not too bad. And for greens, I'm using the new Raven, which got buffed, and this one has offensive ability now as well here. I don't really need the attack speed from Spider or casting speed that badly. Um, also, I'm using Hawk for offensive ability. And the Quill, just because it like gives you 3 green and 3 purple, as well as Aether resistance and defensive ability over here. Then also, since I'm using, or like, this, since this build is a weapon damage based character, right, um, we are using Ghoul. It's like one of, if not the best, like, uh, defensive circuit breaker on any build that uses weapon damage. And other than that, we are also using Satyr's Guide and Eel to get the 10 blue for Ultos. And also, we have the Amatok Spirit of the Winter here. Because it's like a pretty great cold damage proc overall. And yeah, it really gives you like some additional damage. Alright, let me also show you how to recreate these um, devotions. Here we have Grim Tools open, right? And we just press undo here, and I'm gonna do this like step by step for you. So, first of all, you can always like go for the ghoul or the greens and blues, right? Because you're gonna need to take Murmur ASAP, right? Murmur, the Mistress of Rumors, is like the most important um, devotion here for you. So what we're gonna wanna do here is we wanna go for the Ghoul, right? Um, for the Raven and for the Eel. And now we have like all requirements met for Murmur, and we're gonna use the Murmur first of all. And next up. I'm gonna try to aim for like Leviathan and Ultos because like the Blizzard. I mean, you could also like use the Blizzard right now. If you're like leveling, you should probably do it like this, and maybe even use like say the Spider instead of the Raven because like a Spider is better for leveling than Raven. And um, then you can already like level these devotions right while you level right. And uh, otherwise, like you would have to like level Blizzard later and that's like gonna delay your blizzard leveling a little bit um so yeah we can use it like this for now and then try to make our way to leviathan for example so for leviathan you need lots of purple as well so we want to start up, out with the quill here so we're gonna use the quill we're gonna get over to the throne as well grab the owl and the hawk and now we have the requirements met as you can see we can also like pull back this point here from the crossroads by now, and then we're gonna use the Leviathan and try to make sure to grab the active node ASAP to level this as well. And these passive nodes we can also like grab right now or later as you like. I mean, these are gonna be like a huge damage boost for you as well, so you should probably grab them soonish as well. Um, next up, we have the Sailor's Guide, and once we have this one, we can pull out the points from the crossroad here, and then we can just grab Ultos. There you go.
Uh, alternatively, you can also use some other devotions. Um, I've been theory crafting a little bit with something like this, for example. Um, like, because since I don't have lightning to cold conversion, Ultos is it's okay still, but it's not like super amazing. And you could also like try to experiment with something like Elemental Seeker instead, because like this thing deals elemental damage and not only lightning damage. So it would be like 33% cold already, and then you also have like full fire to cold conversion, so it's like 66% cold and 33% lightning. So that should be more damage overall. Also this node over here is like 100% cold and 200% frost burn damage, which makes it probably better than this node here. Um, so yeah, Blind Sage is pretty nice as well, and to like get to Blind Sage you would have to like just pick the spider on top and like a green node here. Also you can like pull out the red node here because you don't need red, like you only need the red for Ultos, right, the six reds. And also I'm, I did take Amatok, like these three points here as well, which gives us like additional cold and frost burn damage here, and then like retracted uh, Satyr's Guide instead. So this is like an, another like alternative devotion tree I came up with as well. Um, it would be pretty nice to like include Viper on a build like this, because now I don't have the percent RR, but to be honest, it's not that important compared to like other types of resistance reduction. So yeah, I mean, devotions are always like a little bit flexible, you can always like try to fit something that you want instead, I mean, you could also like fit Chariot in here for like more standard resistance, or like more OA and DA and armor on the proc here. Um, yeah, feel free to experiment a little bit. And finally, I'm gonna talk about the gear as well. So we are using... the core of this build basically is the Crash and Moon, right? We're using two of these, like once you have one of them, you can kind of play the build already. Um, but also, the quantity of Destructive Whispers here with the Pierce the Cold um, prefix to grenades is also very important. And then to like convert the remaining fire damage, we're using some items with global fire conversion. So here I'm using this Chains of Nightfire for fire to cold conversion, I'm using Death's Whale Mark for fire to cold conversion, and I'm using the Rhyme Forged Mantle Shoulder Piece for additional fire to cold conversion. So like this, this, and this, the weapons, and the conduit are kinda mandatory to have like full physical pierce and fire to cold conversion to your grenades. And then also these gloves like give you additional cold damage to grenades, so these are kinda mandatory as well. And uh, that le leaves you with like not too many not non-mandatory slots, right? I mean, this build is not beginner friendly at all. You guys probably know that already, it's like kind of a meme slash wonky build. Like one of those characters that you do like as your... Probably like your 8th or 10th character when you're like bored of other stuff and you just want to like try out something that you haven't done before. Um, so for fillers, I'm using Ravager's Dread Gaze here on the helm piece. Plus one all skills and a resistance reduction proc. Really strong overall. I'm using one Gargoyle Ring to like max out grenades actually. Like without this, you don't have 26 points of the grenades. So I guess this is kinda semi mandatory as well. Also Dreadlords of Readiness in this case, Dreadlords giving me Love Steal and Readiness giving me Offensive and Defensive Ability. And other than that, I mean also like some Chaos and Bleeding Resistance, right? So yeah, that's a pretty good one, as you can tell. Then a Prime Ring of Morganeth, which is also not too easy to get, but easier than most other items actually. Has huge Offensive Ability and Elemental Resistance plus to Nightfall, which is okay, and also like percent cold damage. We don't really care about the pierce to vitality damage conversion here because we already convert full pierce to cold to grenades first and this type of conversion comes first because it's an item modifier so it comes before this so the pierce damage on grenades will not be negatively affected by this pierce to vitality conversion and like another reason I'm using this is actually because of the proc right the dark presence of those tentacles that you spawn have an aura that has 10% reduced damage to enemies, and since I don't really have a source of that as a saboteur, except for the physical damage reduction on Blackwater Cocktail, like on uh, high potency here, it's pretty nice to have that on top. Also for the boots, I'm using Amatox Step, which have spines of ice as a rock whenever hit, which is like okay-ish, I guess, it's not like amazing, but it's okay. Also this has like 5% Fizzrest, 
And poison with slow resistance, plus two shattering blasts as well. This helps me max out shattering blasts over here. And some HP, so that's pretty good for this world specifically. So, yeah, very grand. Uh, for the chest, this is definitely the uh, most flexible one. I'm just using Divine Steel Hauberk. Feel free to use, for example, Fate Weavers instead, or like any other chest of your choice, to be honest. This is like just my defensive um, choice here, giving me Fire, Chaos, Stun, Resistance on the item itself, and then on the Aura it gives me percent health, 14%, 5% Fizz res, more Fire res, and 18% Wit and Chaos res. And also it like, lets me get like 7% less damage from Chthonics. And I roll like 3% armor on top of that from the armor smith, so that's pretty good. And then I'm also using Stonehide, Kubacabra's Legards of Readiness. Now this is where it kind of starts to become a little bit ridiculous, I know. After like hours of farming endgame stuff like Shadow Realm or Crucible or like just hunting down Nemesis, Nemesis in the main campaign. You will eventually get one of these, but <laughs> they're by no means like beginner friendly obviously. Uh, Stonehide giving you like huge pierce and poison resistance and of readiness giving me like huge OA and DA and the base giving me elemental resistance and plus 3 to high impact makes this like a prime choice for grenade builds that don't have like a better hand slot instead I mean this is like almost always best in slot for grenade builds I feel like because of plus 3 to high impact which is this thing here which gives me like huge fire damage, which gets converted to coal again, of course. So that's really good here. Um, for relic slot, I'm using Serenity, mostly because of plus one Oscars, to be honest, but also the defensive proc is really good. And yeah, because without this, I wouldn't like be able to max these out, or like I would have to like use something else to max them out, right? And it's kind of like they aren't really like any other. Demo relics that give you like cold damage anyway, so you would be ending up like using a plus one night blade relic instead for cold damage usually, and that would mean that you would suffer like plus one all skills and demolitionist. And this build is kind of point starved as you can see. Um, so yeah, Serenity does. You can also use like Mogdrogon's Other if you don't have Serenity. Mogdrogon's Other also gives you plus one all skills, and um, it doesn't have the same awesome defensive proc though, like this. Circuit Breaker is really, really strong, especially on hardcore, it's like insanely strong actually. And yeah, these were already talked about, right? These are mainly there for like fire to cold conversion. Also, this one has like plus one demo, plus one high impact. Um, yeah, that's about it, right? Let me show you the build in action now. Starting out with a dummy kill time here. I'm gonna start at like the full minute. Yeah, so it's like 36 seconds basically, or 37 seconds, which is, I mean, it's kind of okay-ish for like a meme build, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not top tier. Um, but that's, and also it's like pretty piano, as you could tell, right? Like this is, uh, the playstyle is very piano-like. You have to like make sure to press all of these buttons and also make sure to check out your energy, to use energy potions whenever these go like low, like the energy goes low. Um, you would not really have energy problems ever though, like you cannot run out of energy as long as you like use energy potions, um, but you have to use energy potions. And yeah, a man must farm his blooms, right, so we're gonna do another bloom farming drought here. The 
Blooms, blooms, blooms. Oh yeah, let's check out Kraval as well. I didn't actually kill him yet on this character. Gotta grab dynamite though. Kraval, here we go. So don't be afraid to take some damage, we have some circuit breakers like Blast Shield and Also, grenades do have pretty high damage, so they should hit us pretty well as well. There is the blast shield down, and Kraval is down as well, so yeah. Wasn't too bad actually. Definitely had worse fight fights against this guy. He didn't even give me his MI? Oh, come on, dude. This is a debate, by the way, look at this. Three blooms for a shrine? Are you kidding me? No. That's a scam, man. That's a scam. Alright, let's also do a SOT run here, and whenever you do an SOT run, you should always do a Solile run as well. Solile is the boss from the second part of the Hidden Path, so he's like over here. And uh, he's like a drive-by kill, basically, whenever you are gonna go for the SOT. I know that like this way is a little bit shorter, but you can like take the extra, I don't know, 10 seconds to kill Solile as well. Because his pants are really good, and especially like if you are, um, let's say, like pretty fresh to end game, like if you're like able to kill some dungeons maybe, but you're not able to actually do so like shadow ram farming or crucible farming yet, at least like not the higher higher end stuff. Then like yeah, you're probably doing some SOT runs, right? And whenever you do SOT runs, you should always also check out this boss and kill him. Because his uh, Solar Sect Legards always have like uh, Aether, Resistance, and um, Lifesteal as a base, right? So that's pretty good already. Like those two stats are really good, really good actually for like lots of builds. And since this is like a green item, it can roll like the pre and a suffix, and you can get like pretty crazy stuff here. Ah, the red deck needs some keys. Reflect? Hmm, who cares? We have enough last till and all around. So, one of the, or like two of the new items actually in the next upcoming patch 
are gonna be two monster and creatures for Ilgor, right? So this guy is no longer gonna be a meme on the next patch. He's actually gonna be worth farming. So that's pretty great. I'm looking forward to that. Oh yeah, if you're like in need of Spectral Longswords, Spectral Bludgeons, etc, right? Check out this vendor over here, he will always sell you like some skeleton weapons, right? Butlocks, Bludgeons, Swords, Formals, right? So if you need them either for a build or for a... Uh, for a craft, right? If you need them for crafting, you can always like do an SOT run. Actually, has a soul run. Hold shit. Okay, interesting. You can already tell, right? Like you saw him wielding it in his hand. I mean, you don't see him now, but <laughs> last shit active. We can face tank even harder now. Once it's down, you start like using pots and stuff like that, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, once you're out of stuff procs, like still have prismatic rage, hunger, serenity, right? You have like lots of stuff saving you. Once you see all these icons here and they're down, you should start running, but before that, just face tank. And yeah, that's the soul run, that's the two-handed psych by Alchemos. Pretty lucky here actually, to get this here on this random run. Nice, nice. Let me also show you the new dungeon on this character. Um, he can do it, yes. Um, but it's a little bit monka sometimes. But as long as you play around your defensive cooldowns, it's definitely doable. I really hate this mutator though. Like, Shattered is so terrible, right? It basically. Yeah, reduces your damage by 10%. Uh, these two don't really matter, but yeah, this one is horrible. Shadow was really bad. Alright, let's see which matters we face this time here. Bastia and Zephyrus. Yeah, Zephyrus is more chaos, as you guys know, right? He deals lots of physical damage, you have to dodge his rocks from above, otherwise you're gonna take like big damage, especially once you have this debuff on you, right? Hungering Knight. You saw the blue aura that hit me? Yeah, that means my resistances are basically pretty low. I do have like decent overcap, but not for physical, right? Like how do you overcap physical resistance in the first place? I got hit again, we have to like move out a bit here. Um, Oh, we actually have the Ring of Zephyrus, holy shit, this character has... This character has good RNG, I guess. <laughs> Pretty nice. Alright. A Soul Run and a Ring of Zephyrus. I'm not complaining. Alright, let's see if we can like face tank out of this. I kinda doubt it to be honest, but we'll see. Obviously, first priority are always arcanes. Also, try to not get hit by any slabs. Like, watch for slabs are pretty monkers, as you might know. Yeah. I should like pull out a bit here. So that we're not surrounded too badly. We have the blast shield active right now. Alright, 
Sign number one down. Sign number two down. We were kinda lucky because this guy was like in the back and he didn't die and because he didn't die, no new mobs were spawning here, right? But yeah, uh, we can like bomb everything here with our grenades pretty uh, nicely. Alright. No, no. It's gonna be one more wave, or no? No, we did it. Okay, nice. And we got Morganath's Black Heart. Alright, yeah. The runs on this guy are crazy, what the hell? Let's put it into the show off bag. That's my show off bag here. Dude, time warped are almost as annoying as arcane, to be honest. They're slow, it's really ridiculous actually. Also, always check out the vendor. He always sells one purple mat, so grab it. Alright, let's also check out the end boss, obviously. Morganath himself. Let's see how we fare against this guy. That's not be a little bit more class as well. Like, Morganath has ridiculous damage reduction. Or is I mean. We could have ignored the ghost, but I mean, since he spawned in our face anyway, I'm just gonna bomb him. Always check out, like, your buff bar to see, like, if you have any of your circuit breakers active, like, right now, right? You have your blast shield, now it's down, now we have to be, like, a little bit careful, maybe. But I mean, we still have like prismatic rage, ghoul, um, serenity that cannot save us, right? So there's not really any need to panic. But yeah, as you can see, damage is a little bit low against this guy because he does reduce your damage by a lot, and he probably has some pretty high cold resistance as well. I actually, don't know, but that might be true. And yeah, that's it. That's the newest dungeon. And last but not least, let's also check out the local dungeon. Whenever you go to this place, right, you also should check out if you have good freeze resistance. This character already has 70% because of some items giving you like pretty nice freeze resistance actually. So we don't have to like use any freeze potion here. Just go right in. And if you want to farm for the Dark One set, you should kill all th four of these Rift Claimed Tyrants, right? Number one, spawning over here. Number two, over here. Number three over here. Those traps actually proc my serenity, like, it's so ridiculous sometimes. And last but not least, the fourth um, Ethereum is gonna be all the way in the back here, down here. Down the other way. Each of these guys drop a piece of the Dark One set. So to get like all four pieces you have to kill all four guys. Alright, and on to Lokar himself. Um, I'm gonna try to do him without potions here, like if you wanna be safe though, like just use some pots like these, right? Um, you should always use po potions, like ointments against harder enemies like Lokar. Like, don't be greedy, especially in hardcore, like you only have 
I mean, you hopefully have multiple characters, but... Also, as long as you have blasted up, um, feel free to, like, <laughs> face tank, but once it's down, you have to, like, kite a bit. There we go, there's the ghoul, there's the ghoul and the blast shield. You're basically invulnerable now, almost. Yeah, there we go. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, this guy is not the best local farmer, obviously. I mean, this guy is not the best build overall. But I do like the build a lot. It's a fun build, it's like another Granada build. I do like Granada builds a lot, as you guys know. I like my Bombermans. And this guy... Um, Compared to other bomb mounts, this is the most grenades in your face kind of build that you can basically play, right? Like, this guy doesn't throw bombs from afar, he just throws them right into their enemy's face, right? So, yeah, thank you so much for watching this Grim Dawn highlight video featuring the Cold Granado Saboteur. Uh, if you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and checking out the other videos about this character or like other characters as well. I do try to make builds as often as I can and post them here as well. And yeah, thank you so much everybody for your support. See you around on the next video.